Hey everybody, Sam here. And, and Elijah. And Isaac. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing some of the components you see here that the guys are holding up. We're going to be installing an automatic gate opener that is completely off-grid, completely solar powered with batteries and gives a little more security to our fenced in property. First thing to do is to assemble the pivot bracket piece. They give you a bunch of hardware and we're following the instructions for this step by step. So we're gonna give you the Cliff Notes version as we put it together. So go ahead and install it as the instructions show. like that and so what this piece is is this mounts to your post and this is a pivot arm for you to adjust the linear actuator which is the motor that opens your gate exactly the way it needs to be again the instructions tell you all of this with this assembled we can take it over to our post now so the instructions say to mount your pivot bracket in line with whatever pole on your gate you want to have your everything attached to and then you move these arms to where it's about four inches distance from the gate to the brackets when it's all the way open. This looks pretty good. So next thing we're going to do is attach the hardware to attach the bracket to our hinge post. The kit comes with bolts. You could drill all the way through your post and attach it, but I'm using some of these five inch long timber screws. They're a lot faster to work with and they're still gonna be just as strong for this application. All right, so approximately four inches from our gate puts us at that right there for our second bolt nut bushing combination to go into place to change this from a pivoting bracket to a fixed one. We have our bracket mounted to the post. Now we use our hinge pin and bushing, the cotter pin and everything, and attach the actual motor or linear actuator to the hinge pin on that post we just mounted. Our next step in this installation seems a little bit out of order for me, but I think it needs power to the linear actuator to finish hooking up to the gate. The next step is to mount the control box, the brains of this operation. Looks pretty basic, doesn't? Well, you know, whatever. No comment. We're gonna go ahead and mount this to our hinge post, leaving enough room below it to then mount our battery box. You can hardwire the system if you have power or you want to run power up to the gate opener. We decided to buy this additional add-on, which is a box that contains two batteries. This in conjunction with the solar panel is what makes this completely off grid and requires no hookup to the grid. What I'm doing as my next step is hooking up the positive and negative wires to both of these batteries. Then we'll mount this box on the hinge post right below our control box. Actually, I won't hook the battery up first. I'll mount the box first because the screw holes are behind them. Scratch that, reverse it, Willy Wonka style. All right, this one first. Try not to stab my fingers, a little bit at a time, okay? Uh, what? 
Oops. It's all right. Go for it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Mm. Little too far there. Easy, Turbo. That's definitely too far. Let me do this bottom one. Let me get started. Next thing to do is to use the included little screwdriver they give you and attach the wires from the motor to the control board. You want to put it in the slot that says first operator, at least for a single swing gate, and attach the wires in their little labeled colored slots. They make it pretty easy. Red, black, white, and another one. Looks like green from here. We're going to attach them up next. With our wires connected, what you need to do next is turn on the control box, use your remote, run the arm out a little bit, press it to stop, and press it to retract again. What this is going to do is set that arm in the default all the way in position, then you attach it to your gate. Without doing this, you may not have your gate operate correctly, so make sure you do this. Again, it's on the steps, so you probably will. Just say in the next step, I guess. There we go. Now we can open the gate all the way and attach this to the gate. Hang on, watch your hands. So what do I do with these little nut things? They go on the bottom of the bolt. Oh wait, take one of the washers off. You put one washer on top, one on the bottom. Nope, nope. Put the bolt all the way through. Now washer and then nut. Is that kind of the flat and it's supposed to go up? Mm, other, other way. Yes, just like that. What's going on? Isaac? Mm -hmm. You gotta hold it better. Mission Control to Isaac. What's going on? All right, let's do that other one. You tell me when to twist it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we'll get some wrenches and tighten it down. All right, these two brackets are what hold the solar panel in place. And hopefully I didn't just mess up. We'll see if this slides up in here. Try to leave those a little bit loose. Biscuits and gravy. Bojangles, biscuits and gravy.
So the manual doesn't say to do this, but to me it just seems logical. I've installed a ground rod into the ground right here at our control box, and I've looked all over the circuit board, but I see nowhere where they indicate where to ground this in the event of electrical short or lightning strikes. So what I'm going to do is use a piece of wire, attach it to my ground rod at the bottom, and in that control board, I'm just gonna back off one of the mounting screws that holds that PCB or printed circuit board in place and hope that that does good enough. If you have this machine, or if Ghost by any chance is watching this video, where do I ground this at? And if there's not a place, why not? What's the thinking behind that? It's a jumbled mess, and yeah, probably it'll be best to cut the excess off of these, but you cannot re-splice your main motor wire, and I don't want to cut it off. I'm okay with kind of a, you know, a jumbled bit of wire here zip-tied together to know that I can change this around if we ever want to, and I'm not literally cutting myself short on wiring. That completes the gate opener installation, but now we are going to add a keypad. In case we have any friends, family that needs to come over that we're not here or something, we can give them the code to get in, make it a lot easier. So we've decided to put this keypad right here, pretty close to the gate. It's the next post that's on the driver's side of the gate. That way, if friends or family come over, it's easy for the driver to hop out, punch the code, get in, and go on through. This mounts with a couple of screws through this protective cover, then the keypad itself slots inside of it. There we go, totally installed. It took us over the course of two days because we got rained out yesterday, but I would say total install time, including doing the video work, maybe two hours, two and a half at most. So if you're not shooting a video, probably, I don't know, an hour and a half. We did install a similar style, a different brand name gate opener when we lived at our other place in North Carolina. So we kind of knew the steps and kind of things to look for ahead of time. So it's probably a little bit quicker for us on that front. But still, overall, it's not that bad of an install. It seems like this is a little more well built than what we've had in the past too. So it'll be nice to see how well this works and over and over. The boys are very excited to not have to get out of the car to open and shut the gate, especially when it's raining. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is probably the number one thing I do want to 
I guess head off comments. This is not a thing that is um, theft proof or people proof. This is a convenience factor and also handy if you have an area where you have animals and you got to keep that gate shut. Obviously, someone could come and take their hardware off, pull the pins, and get in on your property. They can do the same thing with your fence. They can cut your fence. They can ram your gate with their vehicle. So this is not a person stopper. This is more of a convenience thing, but at the same time, stops people who might be a little overly friendly from just driving up on your property and coming to visit whenever they want to. We pretty much have everything as far as accessories you can get for the ghost control system with the exception of two big things. First one is what is called a zombie lock, which we kind of chuckle at that term, but basically what it is, it is a powered latch and lock that goes on the other end of your gate and actually locks it in place. That way no one can push it open. That is operated and wires up to control box and works with the remote. And it is a pretty cool thing to add on. The other option, is a driveway sensor. It's something that goes on the inside of your gate and it, you bury it and when you drive over it, it triggers it to open and so you don't have to press the button to get out. Right, or if you don't have the remote with you and you're wanting to leave or friends or family are wanting to leave, it triggers and I think it would probably also trigger if the tractor, if I have it up here and want to do some mowing or something outside. Don't know, of the two, I think the driveway vehicle sensor is the one we were really interested in getting probably whenever we can. Then again, that zombie lock's pretty cool sounding too. Although I don't know how practical it really is for our application. I haven't seen any zombies out here just yet. No, I guess they named it that because it's ghost controls. Let's just put something creepy with it. True. Well, and to jump on the whole zombie bandwagon probably. I mean, it's yeah. catchy. It's a zombie it lock. It is. Because that's what you're totally concerned about coming into your yard. Absolutely. Because zombies can't get through fences or anything else otherwise. No. Well, guys, thanks for coming along as we installed our gate opener. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye.